Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender tutorial. Today we are taking a look at how to make a really simple abstract object. I will show you a couple of things regarding modeling and materials. So let's get into it. I'm going to open up Blender. I'll delete everything in the scene like so. And I'll add a circle, a simple circle object. So Shift A, Mesh Circle. I will add a simple deform in the modifiers tab, like that. So with simple deforms, you have these four categories over here that you can pick and choose. What I would suggest is to go randomly, try and find some shapes that might be interesting to you. Maybe try bending them, twisting them, change the axes, just do stuff that it's very random because this is a random process. We're not planning anything specific. I'm just gonna add a subdivision modifier push this bad boy to the beginning, and I'll increase the viewport to let's say two. So I have something like this. I'm gonna press Alt C and then curve from mesh. So if I go into edit mode, I get this curve. Shift Control Alt C, origin to geometry, so we can reset our origin. Shift S, cursor to selected, and I'm gonna add a cube. Let's scale it down slightly like that. And I did the shift select thing because we want to have everything directly oriented with the curves origin of geometry. I'm going to scale this cube on the X axis like that. So it's going to be, let's say about 40. You can check it in the bottom left corner. Let's set the scale to 40. Control A, reset the scale. Let's go into edit mode, Control R, and let's put a couple of loop cuts. I'm going to say 40, it's going to be good enough. Add a subdivision modifier, let's say viewport and render to two and press W to shade smooth. Now I can add my curve modifier, select the curve that we have created. So my object actually follows the curve SX. Let's just scale it so it meets those two ends. We don't need to be mega precise with this. Press S, Shift X, and then increase the size. And this is happening because we are scaling it on the Y and Z axis. Reset the scale again with Control A, and we have this object. Now, I wanna add another subdivision surface, and this is gonna be important because we'll need this to work with us for the displacement. So before I continue with the materials, I'm going to go back into the render properties. I'll change the cycles. I'll change to GPU. In the feature set, I'll set it to experimental. While we're here, let's just tinker with a couple of settings. I usually do a 250 sample render. Light paths, I drop them to 10. The diffuse and glossy as needed. Transmission to 10. The indirect light, I set it to 4.5 and the filter glossy to 1.5. For film, let's set a transparent one because we'll be checking with the HDRI and we don't want the picture of the HDRI to interfere with our render. And for color management, I'm just gonna go with the high contrast look because it offsets a bit the transformation of the filmic. Before I start with the material, let me just set up a quick HDRI. You do that by going to color, environment texture, open, and choose the environment texture that you want to use. A good resource for HDRIs is HDRI Haven. You can find plenty of those there. So if I go into my render view, I should see something like this. Good. We don't want to concern ourselves with lighting right now. We want to set a couple of materials. So let me divide the screen. Let me set up the shader editor. Press N just to hide the, the sidebar. I'm gonna add a new material and I'm going to create a abstract material on it. Principle BSDF, Control T. If you don't have this shortcut, make sure you go under Edit, Preferences, in Add-ons, search for Node Wrangler and tick that one on. When you have these bad boys ready, let's start adding and subtracting some nodes. So I'm gonna connect the generated to the mapping node, like that. 
I'm going to delete the image texture because I won't be needing it. And I'll add a wave texture like that. Connect the vector to the vector. Good to go. I'm going to add a ramp, a color ramp. I'm going to connect the color there and the color to the base color of the principled BSDF. Also a displacement. So I'm going to add a displacement, connect the displacement to the displacement of the material output and the color to the height. Good. Press W to shade smooth. Now everything should be working, but this isn't looking very abstract as of now. Let me make sure that everything is set. So in my settings, I want to go under displacement and set up displacement and bump. Now you can see the displacement is working, though it isn't looking very good. Let's just put it down. Let's push it to 0 0.01 like that. What I'm going to do is put a lot of grooves onto this structure. For that, I want to add first a color gradient. For gradients, I use UI gradients. They always have a nice selection that's very quick to set up, quick to use, and it's always a good one. So you can just click on the hex code and then paste it into your color ramp. So I'm going to select these and I'm going to copy these colors in the order that they are set. Let's choose the violet one. So, and we have this nice distribution. I also want to pull this orange down, add another one and just make it white. So I have something white that breaks the structure. We still need to take care of a couple of things here in the wave texture. First of all, I want to increase a bit the scale. I also want to increase the detail to 16. So we have a nice sharp representation. Detail scale, you can bump it to 10. Now, one way of testing this is go into your edit mode. And now you can see how your material distributes. What we want is horizontal lines, not vertical. So let's try changing the rotation. Let's set it to 90 on the Z and let's exit. And voila, we have a nice little interesting abstract shader. And the best thing about this is you can also scale it up so you can make everything just a bit more exaggerated. So you can really exaggerate those lines. Make sure just that they are not interfering with each other. Also play around with the detail, play around with the detail scale. You can also change the interpolation of the color ramp to B spline. So it's going to make, so it's going to make softer lines, but I'm just going to keep it linear for now. Another thing you can do is go into your wireframe and select the initial circle that we've made. And if you go into edit mode, Press Ctrl T. Now you can actually twist the vertices. So what this does, you can actually select one of these vertices, press O, Ctrl T, and then just select a bunch of vertices completely randomly and start twisting them around to get some different results, maybe a bit more twisting at the top. You can also see that this is the point where our initial cube is actually intersecting. So if you want to correct that, you can just go and scale it down. What remains is just work a bit on your lighting and render it out. So yeah, this is going to be it for this really short material. Hopefully this helped you out a bit. Really interesting trying to mold these materials in. I was inspired by a couple of posts on Pinterest. So I figured, okay, let me try and figure out how to make this. And it's really easy. It's not that difficult. The node setup is not difficult. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do these videos every Wednesday. I have a stream every Saturday at 6 p.m. GMT plus one time. And I also put out uh, chill sesh videos every Friday. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment. I always appreciate those. I always read your comments and take your guys' words at heart and see you in the next one. Bye.